This example looks at carousel tool change simulation. So this is increasing the accuracy of our simulations by showing the tool changes, whether that's on a carousel style machine or a machine with multiple tool stations. So we click on the image to load the project. The project contains a selection of toolpaths and tools, an NC program and the machine. So I can just say simulate from the start and then I could use the arrows on my keyboard just to step through the simulation. So I'm quickly moving through the first section of the toolpath, through the second section, onto the third section of the toolpath. Now as it approaches the end of that toolpath segment, I'm just going to go up to the toolbar, I've set the simulation quite slow, and click play. So we will see the tool finishes that portion of the simulation, returns to the home position, the swing arm will engage and go and collect the tool from the head of the machine. It's then going to move that round to the carousel, load it into the carousel of the machine tool, move the carousel to tool number two, and then move that around and load that into the head of the machine before carrying on with the simulation. So I could just stop that there. And if I was to come here and right click and say simulate from the start again, there is another way we could simulate that, that changing of the tools. So if I type in here simulate tool change and specify a tool name, you will see the swing arm re-engages, takes tool one out of the machine tool, loads it into the carousel and loads tool two into the head of the machine tool. and it resets the carousel of the machine. We could do the same for tool name number three and so on. Now, if you look at the example in the rolling demo, you'll see this folder icon. And if we go to the folder icon, there's various pieces of information contained in here. The first is a technical document, which details some of the new syntax that would need to be added to the MTD files to make these changes. So details about the functionality, the correct syntax needed to make use of them. Now also what is possibly more useful is the fact that the main project we're using here, the MTD file contained within that project, if we just open that up, you can see has all been fully commented. So we'll just step through a couple of these the first section you'll notice is the tool change section. So this below this specifies everything that's going to happen during the simulation of a tool change. This is made up of various moves. We have the pre-moves. So these will be executed before a tool change. You have some relatively simple uh, new lines which move to. So these are moving to positions of specified axes and specified components of the machine. Tool pass means that you pass the tool from whatever component it's currently attached to, to the named component. Once it's been passed to that component, it will then move with that component. So again, various other move commands in there. Once we've run the pre-moves, we will then move on to the tool change moves. So these are done during the tool change. So we have a default set of moves. So this is if you have not named a tool explicitly. So again, move to a specified position, pass the tool to a specific entity. Another new command is the put and get only commands. Put only means they will only be executed when the tool is being put back into the carousel or the loading position. Get only means it will only be executed when the tool is being gotten from the carousel. Now we have default tool change moves. We also have explicitly named or numbered tool change moves. So for tool number one, we can explicitly state a selection of moves. And here we can also explicitly state a location for it within the carousel. So tool number one goes into location one, which is at zero degrees. Tool number two goes into location number two, which is at 15 degrees and so on.
And this is exhibited with tool number four here. I've placed this uh, much further around the carousel and if we go back to the simulation we can actually see that tool number four is placed much higher within the carousel. And I could come down to the typed command again and just simulate the tool change for number four and you'll see it claims the current tool from the spindle, places it back in the carousel and then rotates and gets tool number four from the carousel. Once you've run the tool change moves it then comes back up here and goes to tool change post move. So any moves that need to be performed after the tool change moves. Again we have various move commands, pass commands and a tool change command is simply passing to the actual spindle of the machine tool. So we've got a selection of documentation to help you if you're trying to create some of these yourself and we also have a slightly more involved project uh, within that same area. So if we come back to that folder, we have multiple tool stations example. And if I just open up PowerMill, we could load that example into PowerMill. And you can see we have numerous tool stations here. So if I just say simulate from the start, and if I come into the uh, window down here, the first thing I'm going to do is change uh, for tool number two. Let me just change the speed of that again. So let's slow that right down. And I'm going to change this back and put tool number one back in the spindle. You see you can add varying levels of complexity into these tool changes and all of this is specified and described within the MTD file itself. So I have a selection of tools over on this carousel, but I also have some tools over here on a completely separate station. So if I come down here and just choose to change to tool uh, named three, it will place tool number one back that will load it into the separate carousel. It will then go over to the separate uh, tool station and collect tool named number three and load that into the spindle. So you can build these up to be quite complicated. And again, the example here with multiple tool stations, the MTD file is contained within the project. And we can open that up. And you can see various comments walking you through exactly what's happening. And this is obviously a far more involved example than the first one. The final thing we're going to look at using the same example is the automatic blanking of machine entities. So if I just bring this machine into view and go into the settings page I can change the opacity of the machine tool, accept that and we can see that the machine is nicely shaded. Now this could at times make it difficult to see what was happening during simulations. Whereas now what we have is as we rotate the machine tool around, as soon as it starts to block the view of the tool, it will blank the entities of the machine that are blocking our view. So even if we come down here and turn the machine or start to turn the machine upside down, all of those entities will be blanked. And when they're no longer blocking the view, they will simply be reshaded. If I turn this around here, you can see it gets blanked again.